Kora, welcome. Today I'm going to take you through what's happening on Sunday and um, give you a, a version of the sermon. It's, it's a creative interactive service and so it's um, quite difficult to explain uh, in a like usually in preaching a sermon. It's a peace Sunday and um, begin with a picture of Mount Taranaki uh, behind us as we come into church. Taranaki is known in New Zealand as a mountain of peace, really through the inspiration it gave, the land of Taranaki gave to the prophets, Te Fiti o Rongamai and Tohu Kākehi, who uh, led a non-violent protest back and centering on Parihaka. And then we we go into a, a meditation from the Buddhist tradition, and it's a, it's a bell chant meditation uh, shown on a big screen with some lovely images. This uh, chant meditation calls us into connection with the cosmos, with the earth, with all creatures, with all humans, and also connecting within ourselves. After the meditation, of course, bells in the Christian tradition are also associated with remembering or bringing together thoughts around death. And just this last week, for example, I uh, took the funeral of a 98 year old and counted 98 tolls of our bell um, as we farewelled him. But this Sunday, being Peace Sunday, is also 25 years since the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima Day being three days before that on the 6th. And so again, in, in silence, we will listen to these 75 bells and see some images up on the screen. And this first 20 minutes of so of our service will be, the church will be darkened. It will be a time of, of centering ourselves in peace and then thinking about the devastation of war and the call to peace, the call to us to be peacemakers. And so there's a, with peace, there's a both a, a letting go and there's a, um, a desire to build or connect. The children's talk is, is this one is called The Hurt by Teddy Dolesky. And this is a wonderful story. I won't read it now. I might read it in the and the children's uh, YouTube early next week. But it's a, simply about a, a boy who got hurt by words said by a friend, and then he he built on that hurt. And so the hurt gets uh, shown in the book as, a, um, as this little round face that gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it, um, you know, he, he can't just stuff it in the cupboard anymore. And it's, it's enormous and uh, disturbing his sleep. And then the book goes through how, through the intervention of his dad and his relationship with his dad, um, the hurt starts to diminish. And, and eventually he's able to let the hurt go. Not that other bad words in the future aren't spoken to him, but he never lets them build up to become this big sort of hurt that uh, dominates his life. And it's a story that, of course, is not just a children's story. It's a story about adults being hurt and then feeding their hurt and then holding on to their hurt. And of course, it's not just a story about individuals. It's a story about communities, country even, countries even, uh, being hurt, then feeding that hurt and holding on to that hurt. And it's a story about then how to try to alleviate that hurt, listening, affirming, relating, Walking with a hurt one to a better place of mind and body until the hurt diminishes or disappears. So the story is about peace building. Peace building locally and then the local can go global. In the sermon come homily time, I talk about quintessence. Quintessence is a word that comes from Latin, being the fifth essence. 
and it refers to that which is separate from those elements of earth, fire, water and air. And the quintessence connects them together. In ancient mythology, it was the essence of that which was off the planet. So it was seen as uh, extraterrestrial, if you like, or the substance of the heavenly bodies. But it was latent in all things. And it was introduced into philosophical theory by Aristotle. Of course, uh, scientific knowledge has moved on since then. But in religion and spirituality, we hold on metaphorically to this sense of quintessence. And it's often referred to as spirit. Spirit in which, in whom we live and move and have our being, to quote St. Paul. It's the connective tissue. So Christians can call this quintessence love. Then I show some of the diagrams that I've got. There's uh, this one like this, that's uh, the five earth, air, water, etc. And, um, and spirit. And this other one where the five and the quintessence is like this spiraling thing. You can't really see it, but spiraling, linking them together. And it's this power of love. It's this power that works in the cosmos to animate to heal hurts and to bring hope our first reading today is from first john 2 and in verse 7 it says this call to love is not new it's old but it's ever new and when we live this love allowing it to flow through to animate think of the origin of that word from prophesius to you know animated the clay with a fire when it flows through us to animate and heal us and then healing our relationships. So this love then becomes a light to us, guiding us through all the hurt and destruction of the past into a hopeful future. The sort of love, this is a big meaning of the word love. It's, it's not limited to romance, nor is it limited to the affection that one has for one's children or parents or friends nor is it limited to empathy for or solidarity with the suffering of others. Now, this love can encompass all that and more. It's much bigger. It's the life-giving connective tissue between us. So it is the quintessence of humanity. And then the second text for today is from John 20, verse 7 to 11. And this text transports us into a theater. Firstly, outside the door where the disciples have gathered and this apparition called Jesus is in their midst. Firstly, outside the door, there is violence and fear. Violence and fear in 33 CE, around the time Jesus was captured and suffered and died. And violence and fear in the late 1st and early 2nd century, when this text was written and which its first audience was. Time of expulsion of the Jesus followers from the synagogues. A time still in the aftermath of the Roman Jewish war. And then the violence and fear today. So the first task in this theatre we in this theatrical setting is maybe the hardest which is letting go of hurt and fear let it go and secondly into this drama there is fellowship and food inside the doors and we know the early christian communities were largely constituted by people who didn't have houses in which they could meet. So unless a, a more wealthy person was part of the group, uh, the Jesus followers would hire a room where a dozen or so, a kind of supper club, would meet to talk and share and care and break bread. Communion was a fellowship before it became a sacred ritual. So the second task 
is about building fellowship, building connection. And then thirdly, despite the locked doors, when they meet for fellowship and food, they experience God and Jesus, the God and Jesus from both outside and inside, moving among them. Fear and locked doors didn't bother this God presence. And this God presence said, peace be with you. And then it said, I send you. And then it breathed on them and said, receive the spirit. The breathing idea is from uh, Genesis 2, which is the first written creation account, written four to five hundred years before Genesis 1. And it is about God giving life. So you could translate the saying as Jesus resuscitating them and saying, receive the Holy Spirit. Breath and spirit being the same word in Hebrew. So I'll offer you three paraphrases of these statements. Be at peace in yourselves and among yourselves. And do not be afraid. Let go of your hurt and fear. I send you outside the doors to take your peace and mingle it with the peacemaking works of others so that the hurt that can produce violence might be diminished and eventually be gone. Receive the spirit, my spirit of love. It is physical and spiritual. It will connect you not just with one another, not just with those you are afraid of, but with all life and all the elements of life. The spirit of peace, the spirit of compassion is found in this weave, this interlock of connection. And so the third task is that we, along with others outside the doors, are to be revealers of this weave, repairers of the rip, sewers and stitches of hope. The service within uh, continues and uh, we come to communion and we're doing communion quite differently on Sunday. Because communion was firstly a fellowship, a, a weaving together of all kinds of people, odd bods, good bods, lonely and lost bods, fellowship of maybe a dozen or so people, a fellowship in the spirit. And so I'm going to invite people on Sunday to move their chairs or bodies into groups of about eight to 12 people to recover that sense of communion being in small groups. And then one person from each group will come and uh, collect a candle and a glass of water off the communion table and put it on the floor in their circle. And looking at the candle in the middle, I'll say those words again. Be at peace in yourselves and among yourselves. Do not be afraid. Let go of hurts and fear. And here again, the words of the Spirit, which says, you are forgiven. Forgive others. Forgive yourself. And then I'll invite one person in each group to take the glass of water and dip their finger in it. And make the sign of the cross on the hand of the person next to them. And then pass the glass along and the next person do it. This water and sign not only reminds us of our baptismal acceptance that we are loved but our baptismal vocation that we are to love others and i'll say again those words i send you outside the doors to take your peace and mingle it with the peacemaking works of others so that the hurt that can produce violence might be diminished and eventually be gone.
And then I'll ask one person from each group to come and get a, a plate of cut bread and little cups of wine. But before I do that, I'll recall the words from Paul in 1 Corinthians, written about 52 CE. In these small, in the small fellowship groups like the Corinthian community, and then associate bread and wine, not just with Jesus, but with connecting, connecting with each of us, connecting with all the living and the dead, the communion of saints, as it was called, connecting with all the elements of life, with the essence of God. And then say those words that we call the words of institution. And pray a prayer asking for that quintessential spirit, that breath of life, that weaver of connection, to come and make these simple things, food, fellowship, friendship. Animate them, bring them alive to us, for they are the ingredients of hope and healing for the world. Blessings to you this week and all whom you love.